Hello Cardboard Lovers, it's Cardboard Badger here. I hope you're doing well and today we have a brand new standard legal deck tech for you. We're going Demir Dungeons. We're going to be venturing into those dungeons. We're going to be getting the payoffs with the abilities of some of our creatures and cheating out larger creatures a little bit earlier than we should do and going in for the win. So I hope you enjoy this deck tech. If you do and you would like more Cardboard Badger in your life, there's a selection of links in the description below. It will help out the channel a lot and that being said we will get straight into it. Starting off with our dungeons, there are three we can venture into. We're going to start off with the Lost Mine of Fandelva, because we want to get through this as quickly as possible, enabling us to use the abilities on some of our creatures. The second and most important one, which is the longest dungeon that we're going to have to venture through, is Dungeon of the Mad Mage, which is absolutely fantastic if we can get to the end, the Mad Wizard's Lair. Uh, well, we can draw... Uh, three cards, reveal them, and you may cast one of them without paying the mana cost. And we've got the scrying beforehand, so we can hopefully set that up. That's super important for our big creatures that we want to cheat out. And the final dungeon is the Tomb of Annihilation, which is the one that doesn't really get used as far as this deck's concerned, but you never know. So it's important that we've got the options. Don't forget, you can only venture into one dungeon at a time, so if you do happen to pick uh, the Lost Mine to start with, you will have to complete that first before you can choose either another dungeon or the same one again. So starting off with our creatures, we have a total of 17 and we have a full playset of Eccentric Apprentice. For 3 mana, 2 and a blue, we have a 2-2 Tiefling Wizard with flying and when Eccentric Apprentice enters the battlefield, venture into the dungeon. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you've completed a dungeon, up to one target creature becomes a bird with base, power and toughness, 1-1 one, one, and flying until end of turn, which is brilliant. It's going to cause a problem, reduce their largest threat, the biggest creature, down to a 1-1 one, one bird. Up next we have a playset of Yuan T. Malison. A 2 mana, 1 and a blue. We have a 2-1 snake rogue. Yuan T. Malison can't be blocked as long as it's attacking alone and... When Malison deals combat damage to a player, venture into the dungeon. So, an unblockable dungeon venturing snake, which is absolutely fantastic. It's not legendary, so that's why we're playing a full playset. And this is a huge key into getting through these dungeons as quickly as possible. We're also playing two copies of a Sererak, the Archlich. For three mana, two and a black, we have a 5-5 five, five zombie wizard. And when he enters the battlefield, if you haven't completed the Tomb of Annihilation, return the Archlich to its owner's hand and venture into the dungeon. So for three mana, it's going to enable us to venture into the dungeon quicker to at least complete maybe one of the other ones. But if we are going to be concentrating on the Tomb of Annihilation and we do complete it, when this attacks, each opponent you will create a 2-2 black zombie creature token unless that player sacrifices a creature which is fantastic with one of the other creatures that we have coming up. We're going to be playing two copies. We're also going to be playing one copy of Vampire Spawn for three mana, two and a black. We have a 2-3 Vampire with when the Vampire Spawn enters the battlefield, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Uh, this is purely in, so it will enable us to flicker it in backwards and forwards to hopefully keep us in the game longer or just drain our opponent out. And in addition to that, we are going to be playing one copy of Yuanti Fangblade for three mana, two and a black. We have a 2 2 Snake Rogue with Death Touch, and whenever Fangblade deals combat damage to a player, venture into the dungeon. Up next, we have two copies of Thassa Deep Dwelling for four mana, three and a blue. We have a 6 5 Indestructible God, and as long as your devotion to blue is less than five, Thassa isn't a creature. And at the beginning of your end step, Exile to one other target creature you control then return that card to the battlefield under your control so we are going to be flickering eccentric apprentice for additional triggers and venturing into the dungeon more or possibly just using our vampire spawn to ping them for two and gain two life for ourselves we're also going to be playing one copy of zombie ogre for five mana three black black we have a three five zombie ogre and at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, venture into the dungeon. So obviously it could be one of our creatures, it could be one of their creatures, it doesn't matter, but it does give us the opportunity to get through those dungeons even quicker. And our final creature, we have two copies of Demon of Loathing for seven mana, five black black. 
we have got a 7-7 seven, seven demon. It's got flying, it's got trample. And whenever a demon of loathing deals combat damage to a player, that player sacrifices a creature, which works fantastically with the zombie ogre. And we are going to be cheating this out with our dungeon of the mad mage and making sure that once we've drawn our cards and we've scryed previously, that we can scoop one of these up and then play it for free. It's a world of fun. And those are our 17 creatures. Up next, we have our non-creature spells. Starting off with a playset of Fly. For one blue mana, we have an enchantment, an aura, and we can enchant creature. Enchant creature has flying, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, venture into the dungeon. This stuck onto an eccentric apprentice, or our Yon T Malison is absolutely fantastic because we're going to get double triggers and go through those dungeons super fast indeed. Up next, we have two copies of Reaper's Talisman. For one black mana, we have an artifact and an equipment with whenever a quick creature attacks, it gains death touch until end of turn, and whenever a quick creature attacks alone, defending player loses two life and you gain two life. So, gaining and draining, an amazing card, but just the two copies of. Up next we have one copy of Runaway Together for two mana, one and a blue. We have an instant. Choose two target creatures controlled by different players. Return those creatures to their owner's hands. And we're also playing two copies of Fate's Reversal. For two mana, one and a black, we have a sorcery. Return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to your hand and venture into the dungeon. This is brilliant if we happen to have lost one of our key creatures the ability for two mana to one, enter a dungeon, and also get one of our creatures back is fantastic. So, two copies of. Up next, we have two copies of Heartless Act for two mana, one and black. We have an instant. And we can choose one of the following destroy target creature with no counters on it, or remove up to three counters from target creature. And next, we have Bar the Gate. We're playing the full playset. For three mana, two and a blue, we have an instant. We counter target creature or planeswalker spell and we venture into the dungeon. And our final card, before we get to our land base, we have got three copies of Precipitous Drop. For three mana, two and a black, we have an enchantment, an aura. And when Precipitous Drop enters the battlefield, venture into the dungeon, which is great. And enchanted creature gets minus two, minus two, which is really good. But if we have completed the dungeon. It's going to get minus 5, minus 5 and obviously we are going to be completing multiple dungeons with this deck. So minus 5, minus 5 for 3 mana and being able to venture into the dungeon is a good thing. And finally we get to our lands. We are playing 24 in total. We have 9 islands. We have 11 swamps and we have a full playset of clear water pathway, stroke murk water pathway depending on what we need. So there we have it. That is the entire standard legal deck tech, Demir Dungeons. I hope you've enjoyed this deck tech. All I'd like to say is if you would like more Carvel Badger in your life, please check in the links below. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think of Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. If you enjoyed this set, are you not liking it that much? Um, be interesting to see your thoughts. And all I'd like to say is thank you for watching, and we will see you again soon here on Carvel Badger.